Good afternoon. Welcome back uh, to Mission Control here in Houston. Uh, joining me is our lead uh, Spacewalk Flight Director for today, Royce Renfrew. Royce, uh, if you could uh, take a moment to summarize uh, today's spacewalk activities uh, and the events that led up to and uh, required an early termination to the spacewalk. Sure. So, the uh, uh, what I said to the team before we went out the hatch, uh, and I've said this in the every EVA I've done the one in December it was the same speech was that the objective that we have today is to take the crew outside the hatch and bring them back in and somewhere in between the depress and the repress we're going to do some other things but the primary objective is to get the crew back inside the hatch safe uh, and that's what we're all focused on then that's exactly what we did today we uh, we went outside we did a couple of tasks there the suit started talking to us uh, we had a CO2 sensor that went fritzy on us, and uh, then uh, a little bit later in the EVA, Tim Coper started seeing some water on his visor. Those are all indications that we have some water carryover in that EMU. I'm not going to try to diagnose the problem that I had with the EMU today. It was very similar to the one that, we, that, that we've had before where we had water carryover into the helmet. I made the call after uh, we started getting some water on the visor to terminate the EVA. Uh, we brought uh, both crew back inside, uh, uh, ran the expedited suit off for uh, Tim Copra to, to get him out of his helmet anyway, and then uh, uh, then we uh, strolled back to our normal uh, egress and post-EVA uh, procedures for uh, Tim Peake and Tim Copra after that, after we got his helmet off. We did do some collections, some sample collection. We, we got some of the water out of the helmet, the, the, the helmet, uh, uh, high absorbent pad that's inside the helmet now. We collected that. Uh, we used a syringe to pick up some water that was in there, took a bunch of pictures, looked at the, the LCVG that Tim was wearing after he came out, looked at his drink bag, looked at a bunch of different stuff. So we uh, coordinating with our friends down in the MER, our engineering counterparts, uh, try to get as much data gathering off of uh, this EMU as we could so that going forward we can go figure out what happened to this, uh, uh, what happened on this EVA to this EMU so we can prevent that in the future. Royce, a great deal of work uh, since the Chris Cassidy Luca Parmentano spacewalk in July of 2013. A lot of work has been done to refine uh, the flight rules regarding situations such as we saw today. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the approach now versus July of 2013 and how you as a flight director uh, interpret the flight rules and then make the final call that you did today? Sure, and and so so everybody's completely cognizant of that uh, of that case where Luca wound up with a bunch of water's helmet with uh, Mr. Cassidy out there. We brought him back inside, we, and we've spent a great deal of time in the last couple of years looking at that case in particular, trying to understand the the what happened in the EMU to allow that water carryover to occur, and to posture ourselves so that we are in a config. Uh, that if we got into the case again, which is conceivably, I'm not going to try to call it today, but again, it's conceivably what we got into today. Uh, I think that demonstrates that the training that we've uh, that we've gone through in the last couple of years, we're talking about the flight rules, we're talking about uh, understanding uh, what it means when that uh, CO2 sensor goes bad, that could be water carryover into the suit. We didn't terminate the EVA at that time because we've seen that in the past, but we did, if you remember, as we were going forward from that point, we did ask uh, Tim Coper to give us HAP checks more often than we had normally would have, uh, and that's part of the training, part of the follow-on from what we did there. You see that CO2 sensor go by, go bad, one of the legs of that fault tree says you're going to get water in the helmet, so you start asking the crew. Uh, not only uh, are you starting to have any CO2 symptoms because I don't have a sensor there, but uh, are you starting to feel any, if you move your head around inside the helmet, are you starting to feel any water in the hap? And then when we got the water on the visor, that was the, that was the trigger where I pulled the trigger and we terminated the EVA. The activity today, the uh, all these events you just described that led up to the uh, decision you made to uh, call off the EVA uh, at an earlier point, all the major objectives have been completed, of course. What, um, the, obviously, uh, the crew was never in any danger, right? Crew was not in any danger today. Uh, uh, again, based on what the lessons learned that we had, 
Uh, we executed per our normal procedures for this failure case. Uh, there are multiple failure cases on the EMU, and we spend a great deal of time looking at each of those individual failure cases. What would you do in this case? Uh, there's this thing called a cuff checklist. Uh, you'll see the EV crew members thumbing through it occasionally. I have one on my console. There are 30, 40 pages in there of things that could go wrong with the suit. One of them in there says, well, you have water and helmet. Uh, so we executed per our nominal timeline. And again, the, the crew is not in any danger, which is why we were in a terminate case instead of an abort case. And we did not do the uh, expedited repress. We did the normal repress because following the signature as it was going, uh, we made the decision that we did not need to go down a path to, to do an emergency repress of the airlock or call an abort for the case. It's, there's a subtle difference in EVA terminology between a terminate and an abort. Terminate, you can take a little bit of time, clean up the work site, and in an abort case, you drop everything and come back inside. And I called a terminate today. We did not do the emergency repress. We did the normal repress. So it, it, we were we were in control of the case, but the, uh, we could not ignore the case as we went forward. And in fact, the crew took time out to thank the team down here before the repress even began. Another indication uh, that uh, there was time to do this in an orderly fashion. Yeah, I thought that was good. Uh, Tim Coper. So again, the objective for today's EVA was to go out and replace the se sequential shunt unit on, on Channel 1 Bravo. Uh, and we did, and it works just fine, and that's awesome. So we, we managed to get our primary objective done. And while Tim was in the airlock, while we were doing that nominal repress, he took a few minutes to thank the teams for all the work that had gone into getting him out and get to go do that SSU r, &R. So good indication that the, that the crew was not in imminent danger if he's giving uh, thank you uh, uh, thank you speeches at the Oscars here. And the bottom line is uh, the engineers now go off in a CSI mode and do detective work. That's correct. And that's why it's important. Uh, you, you probably heard some of the calls going up between Jessica and uh, Reed there to go get a syringe and, and collect the water that was in the helmet. We collected the the, uh, the HAP out of the helmet. We collected a bunch of pictures. And then we'll turn all that over to the engineering community along with the ops guys and I'll sit around and see if we can figure out what happened here again to, to try to prevent this from happening again. But I but I do want to emphasize that you know that our the plans that we had, the procedures that we had, the the products that we have on console with us, the training that we've gone through in the last couple of years was exactly on 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 par with what we executed today. So I was very happy about that. The team did a great job. Great. Thanks very much. Royce Renfrew, lead flight director for today's spacewalk. Appreciate it, and congr congratulations on uh, accomplishing uh, the restoration of full power to the space station. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much.